Hi guys, um, it's Mindy. Hey, I wanted to make a video to address a problem that a lot of people have, and that is um, um, having extra moisture in, in your bathroom um, that will come dripping down your bathroom walls. Um, now I've been a painter for a long time and I run into this occasionally where, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a great big mansion or it's a tiny little house, that's not the issue. The issue is um, there is a moisture problem that can be coming from a couple different sources. One of the problems could be that the moisture in your bathroom is not vent venting out properly, okay? But if you have the very best vent and you're pulling out as much moisture as you can and you still have water dripping down your walls, um, what, what I found is looking back to history um, and what has worked for making the walls breathable is using a natural or lime-based plaster. So again, we're gonna talk about lime-based plaster. Um, so this week I was in a home that had that problem. They actually have a steam shower and they can't use the steam because the, the, um, the condensation drips down the sides of the wall. So I treated the ceiling with um, a lime-based plaster, Marmarino Chaos. Um, I don't use a lot of lime-based plaster, but I use it for this this occasion and um, the Marmarino Chaos is easy to apply. Um, it's kind of a chunkier um, plaster. It's not a polishing plaster. It's more matte. It can be polished a little bit, but the point is on the ceiling, I apply it and do not seal it because it's a breathable plaster. It's made out of lime and marble. Um, and normally, when we apply lime to a surface, we do seal it. So if it's on a fireplace or sidewalls, yes, we seal it. But in this case, I'm not going to seal it because if you seal it, it is no longer breathable. And what lime-based plaster in history, when you hear about plaster, okay, historically, lime takes care of a condensation problem because it after you take a shower, there's moisture in the air and it absorbs that moisture. It may actually get darker in color. And then over the course of the day, it releases the moisture back into the air. So it happens gradually where if you have a sealed surface, say a painted surface, okay, especially, you know, the harder the surface, the, the, um, the quicker the con condensation is going to stick to it because there's nothing that can grab it. It just, it has nowhere to go. Okay. So it ends up on your ceiling and it, um, depending on the, the airflow in the room, it will start to cut drip down your wa your walls and that's gross, right? So, um, yes, lime based plaster unsealed, um, will help in now in Europe. Like, okay. Like I know in Ireland, they mainly use to this day, um, lime-based plasters on their walls. And here in America too, looking way back to 100 year old homes, the walls were probably plaster, almost certainly because drywall didn't come into play until I think the 50s. Um, okay, so you have um, lath walls behind the plaster, um, the lath, is breathable, the plaster is breathable, and when it when it stops absorbing is when we put a coating over the top. So if it's painted, you know, in these old houses, if they're painted, the plaster isn't working for that process, okay? But sometimes you'll see um, homes that are plastered, um, that are left unpainted, and because they don't need to be sealed, those are breathable houses, okay? So all that aside, I guess what I'm trying to say is one way that we can battle this condensation problem is to make the ceiling more breathable, okay? So in this home, 
I applied um, a, a, a kind of a gripping plaster. It's, it's called Shark Tooth Primer. Um, there's qu quartz based primers, but anyway, they have a little tooth to them. Troweled on two coats of Marmarino Chaos, which is a lime based plaster. And, um, and now when they have steam in the room, there's a place for it to go. It'll, you know, it'll rise. Okay. Then it will go, it'll be absorbed by this plaster ceiling and throughout the day it'll dry out. Okay. So it doesn't ha it's not in a big hurry to get anywhere. It has a place to go. So it doesn't drip down the side of the walls. Um, I, like I said, I did not seal this plaster. If I were to do the same technique on the side walls, just for uh, for appearance, because a lot of people love the look of uh, lime-based plaster, polished or unpolished, I would seal that because we want to keep them clean, right? Um, as far as the sealing, that's not really an issue. The, the issue we're dealing with is a condensation problem. Okay, so um, you may ask, what if, you know, Mindy, what if I want to clean that ceiling, you know, eventually? Well, you know what? In a few years, if you feel like you want to clean that ceiling, it can be painted over. It can be sanded lightly, okay? And it can be recoded. So there's a couple different ways to deal with it. Just like if you had a ceiling, a painted ceiling in your bathroom that you felt like, ah, needs a coat of paint. It's getting kind of, you know, gross up there. Same thing, we'd have to wash it, we'd have to repaint it, okay? So though, you know, you have to deal with it. But this is strictly to take care of a condensation problem. Now underneath that, in the homes here, well, in most of the homes that I deal with, there's sheetrock, okay, which is a brand name. So let's say drywall, which has been applied, taped, um, mudded, and then um, primed and painted. So there's a sealant there. Then we're applying plaster underneath that, right? So it has, I, I'm exaggerating, but now it has a surface that's breathable till it hits that painted primed layer, right? So back in the day where there was lath behind plaster, it would have all that area that was breathable. Well, we don't have that. So what I'm trying to say is it may not take care of the problem completely. I think it's just each place is going to be, um, each home is going to, you know, it's going to respond differently based on the, the um, how bad the condensation problem is. But it will help. And it may take away the problem completely. Um, and very likely it will. So um, I, I know it's a problem. It's kind of a issue that doesn't really get talked about or dealt with, I feel. And, um, but it, 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 it's a problem. And one more quick note, I know I'm talking a lot, and you're probably bored, but um, my dad was a drywaller and started the drywall business about the time I was born in the 60s. And I remember at one point he was complaining that the houses are built to be too tight. Um, they're too airtight. And I remember thinking, well, it doesn't seem like that should be a problem. You know, it seems like that should be a good thing. In one regard, certainly it is a good thing. It keeps heat in and everything, but it also, the house is not able to breathe. Okay. So, you know, this condensation get, gets trapped. And if it gets trapped in your bathroom, you can have mold and you can have mildew problems. You can have dripping walls. Um, the other thing that's really cool about lime-based plaster, it is um, mold resistant. So mold won't grow on it, okay? So there's just a lot of reasons why to, why you could try lime-based plaster on your ceiling. Um, whether for the aesthetic, because it's beautiful and there's lots of different products um, or applications. Um, some of them have sparkles in it. Some of them you can do a high polish on. The one that I'm talking about, Mar Marmarino Chaos, um, it is gran kind of granular and he heavy bodied. And you'll see in my video, because I took some step-by-step -step, um, photos and videos that I'm going to, that you'll see next. Okay. So thanks for listening um, to me through this whole thing. But I felt like it, it really needed to be addressed. If you have any questions, um, 
please let me know in the comments and I will do my very best to um, address them. Again, this is a great answer, okay? It may not be a bulletproof answer depending on your situation, but it's a great answer. If you've done everything you can um, to try to get the moisture out, your fan is working fine and all that, and you still have moisture, this is a good thing to do. All right, good luck. I had been trying to do the video completely by myself to this point, but I'm going to have my friend Lisa now <laughs> kind of t videotape me so you can kind of get a better feel for um, applying the second coat kind of my uh, technique. Um, also, I wanted to show you a couple different problem, potential pitfalls that you may run into. Um, one of them is on the second coat, you may see that some little bubbles sometimes develop when you're after you hit um, trowel on your second coat and it's um, actually very easy to take care of little bubbles okay so if you see little bubbles take your trowel and just lightly go over them and they'll pop right away the second is if you get chatter which is little lines like that see same thing just very lightly with your trowel just flatten them out easy easy This is actually a really wonderful technique, and I know that you can do it. Probably practice it on a hard board first, but um, this is such a great technique. And here is the final product. Thank you so much for joining us. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Thank you.